Hey folks, welcome. Here we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man who finds out his first ever girlfriend has been paying for a motel with his money. Let's see how it goes. Story 1. My girlfriend's 21 and I 22 have been together for a while. This relationship has meant so much to me because it's my first, but her third. First girlfriend and first kiss, so I was pleased when we seemed to be working out. Everyone around me had said that first relationships are just like a training ground, but we seemed to sort out all our kinks and differences and got along very well. Anyway, everything progressed pretty quickly for us and she seemed to be on the same page about it. So we introduced each other to our families, who were very welcoming on both ends, and started talking about living our lives together. Because we seemed to want the same things in life but were just starting out financially, we opened up a joint account and contributed to it regularly. The plan for the account was to cater for a house, car, vacations, and anything else we wanted to do together. I definitely contributed more to it because I was earning more and seemed to be more invested in it than she was. A few weeks ago, I got our joint account's bank statement and was surprised to find money withdrawn in regular intervals. All of it seemed to be paid off to a two-star hotel. The entire situation was strange because my girlfriend had always communicated when she took out money. Plus, it seemed like she hadn't contributed to the account in a while. I confronted her with the bank statement and asked about the hotel. She feigned ignorance about the whole thing, suggested that we could have signed up for one of the hotel's clubs or activities and forgot about the subscription. She said it so firmly, but I was sure I had never been to that hotel, so I decided to follow it up. I went over to the hotel and asked a few questions. Luckily, the receptionist was bored out of her mind and was ready to talk. After some back and forth, I finally showed her my girlfriend's picture. She perked up immediately and said that my girlfriend had been there regularly with another guy, and from the way they hang around each other, it was clear something romantic was going on. She even mentioned that they had booked in advance for the following day, then concluded that they are their only regular customers. I was crushed by the revelation, but I decided to play it cool. I left a message for her that would be delivered when she came over for her little affair and immediately went to close down the account. I emptied it and transferred the money to my personal account without telling her about it. I figured this is a good way to teach her a lesson and get rid of her. I'm just anxious about what's going to happen now. Update. My girlfriend started blowing up my phone the following evening. I guess she had finally realized that she couldn't pay for her affair with my money. She kept sending me messages begging me back. I finally picked up one of her calls to explain that we were over. She cried and asked me for some money. Apparently she had been out of work for a while and didn't know how to survive without our joint account. She swore that the affair was just to fill the time and it meant nothing. I told her I wasn't interested and blocked her on all platforms. Her family also called me to ask me why we had broken up. I told them to ask her about her hotel club activity that she had signed up for. It was unfortunate that my family had grown close to her as well, and I was a bit sad that I had to explain that the relationship was done. I guess first relationships are just generally tricky, but this was just a train wreck. Just my luck. I'm sorry this happened to you, OP. I believe past relationships give us different experiences that we can choose to learn from in going to our future ones. Your first relationship was indeed a train wreck, but I believe the next one would be better if you learn from this one. Always follow your gut instinct. Your ex saying she was having an affair to fill the time was comical to me. I'm glad that even though this was your first relationship, you didn't tolerate her cheating on you. I hope your next relationship turns out to be a much better one. Good luck, OP. Story 2. I thought I would post how I'm feeling. I'm hoping it helps. I don't have many close friends I feel I can confide in. They're either mutual friends of me and my wife, or I'm just not that comfortable with them. I've been with my wife for 12 years now, married for 5, and we have two small children. It's been about 8 weeks since she told me she was having an affair with a friend of ours. He's also married with children. I thought our marriage was good, so this completely knocked me for 6. 
Sure, there were things we should have done, maybe made a bit more effort, but I was happy. She's been on antidepressants and I think that played a major part. I don't want to get bogged down by the details of what happened because as things stand, she's ended it with this guy and seems genuinely upset at the hurt and mess she's caused. The main reason for posting this is that I just can't see a way in which I can be truly happy again. My wife wants this to work, and I do too. But any spare moment I have in the day, I just seem to dwell on everything and it makes me feel like crap. I have trouble concentrating on work. Luckily, I'm so good at my job I can do it on autopilot, and I just can't seem to enjoy the things I used to like TV shows and video games. Even spending time alone with my children, I feel like a terrible father because I let them get on with their own playtime and I just sit there comatose. Sometimes I sit there and cry. I've been to the doctor who's recommended a few things, but I'm desperate to stay off antidepressants because that's how she ended up like this. I feel awful because I put on a brave face and pretend I'm okay in front of other people, but I'm really not. When I first found out, I was absolutely devastated. I barely slept or ate. Then I kind of went into save my marriage overdrive and I thought I was starting to feel okay. But now, eight weeks after the fact, I'm just emotionally exhausted. I'm starting to feel anger and shame about it all. I'm irritable all the time. The smallest of things annoy me. I could drop an apple in work and I just want to scream. I honestly think this is more painful than when I found out. I've spoken to my wife a bit about how I'm feeling, but honestly, she's feeling so much guilt now she's off meds, I don't want her to feel worse. I suppose ultimately my question is, will I eventually feel better? I don't want to be stuck in this haze forever. Has anybody had the kind of experience I'm describing? How did you get through it? First update. I'm pretty lost at the minute and not sure what I should do. I'm about three months from discovering my wife's affair. Right now, I'm not sure what I want. I feel so lonely and broken. I'm having nightmares and anxiety attacks. I just don't feel right in my own skin. In that sense, I just don't see how I can work through this when I'm so fundamentally broken. I know that I love my wife. I love her so much more than I thought I did. But I keep wondering if I should leave for myself. That I should go away, fix what's inside me, and then come back. Right now it's hurting her that I'm so hurt. She wonders if I can ever get over this and let it go, but I feel the same about her. The thing that makes me think leaving is a bad idea though, is the thought that what if I initiate some space and she fills it with this other guy, or someone else? What if I leave and then can never come back? We have children, a mortgage, a car, etc. Second update. I won't get a chance to reply to everyone individually, but I have read all the responses and really appreciate it. Today I don't feel like leaving at all. It's weird, some days I just want to run out the door, away from everything and never come back. Then some days I can't imagine what I would do on my own. I've decided on the advice here and elsewhere that three months is far too early to settle on my feelings. So I've given myself a date in which I'm going to think more about it and make more of a decision. Last update. It's been six months since I first found out about my wife's affair and two months since she finally admitted to sleeping with OM. The four months in between were a nightmare of her going back and forth between me and him. Since finding out, I've pretty much let myself fall apart. I've been so hurt and downtrodden by it. It's not even the affair that's getting me down or the lying. It's that she doesn't make me feel wanted or special after agreeing to reconcile. I feel so taken for granted. Last night, I couldn't handle it anymore and told her I finally wanted to separate permanently. I love her very much, but right now I don't think either of us can give the other what they want. She needs me to just move on and forget about it and for me to be patient and give her space to get over it. I need her to make me feel wanted and appreciated after taking me for granted and letting me down for so long. It's shit that we also have so much going on this year and we have two children, but we just have weeks where we're okay and weeks where we tear each other apart. She thinks me having counseling sessions and taking antidepressants is attention seeking, despite me breaking down in front of her on a couple of occasions. I think her attitude towards me and the situation is cold and defensive which I understand comes from a place of not wanting to think about it. Right now, I just feel so sad. 
Even though I made the decision so that we can go our separate ways and deal with our own things without the friction of dealing with somebody else, I just feel like I'm letting my children down. I feel like a complete failure. You're not a failure, OP. You tried your best. You stayed even when you felt your lowest. You tried to fix your marriage, but it's very hard to fix a marriage that's broken due to the infidelity of one partner. Even if that partner doesn't understand that you can't just heal and forget everything. It doesn't work like that. You can't just forget. I thought your STBXW was doing her best too before the last update. But now I realize that she hasn't been doing her best. She's not willing to work on the marriage that she broke, so why should you? Your kids will be fine. You're leaving her so you can work on yourself. So go on and become a much better man and father. It's the best thing you can do for yourself and your kids. Now for some comments. I'm sure your cheating wife would love it if you felt yourself a failure. That would absolve her of her failures in her mind, I think. You are not the faithless one here. You're not the one who didn't put in the work. So go your own way, push for joint custody, and be a good dad and a great person. Look to your family and friends for support. You are not a failure. You successfully kept your vows. You successfully put your marriage before your pride and agreed to reconciliation. You successfully got the local you needed to be strong for your children. Now you have successfully identified that your wife is not putting in the effort necessary to rebuild your relationship and chosen to become a healthy person so that you can be the father that your children need and deserve. That's a whole bunch of success right there. Please look up the five stages of grief. Understanding the emotions that you're going through, giving them each a name, will help take some of their power away. Stage five is acceptance, and brother, it feels great. You will get there, you will be great, and so will the kids because of you. You're not letting your children down, you're becoming a better person to be there for your children. Having a mentally healthy support system will help them develop into happy adults. You're brave enough to fight the storm and survive. They'll feel proud when they grow to notice what you did for you and them. Our hardest times are the ones that build our soul. One day, you'll be grateful for being the person you once wished to banish. In my experience, these moments make us more caring and loving. We learn empathy and become more human to say something. Because we learn from failure, you deserve to be loved and cared for so your children deserve a loving support system. You're brave, you're strong, and you're going to survive infidelity.